Okay, so today we have a special guest on my channel, introducing Stacy. Um, Stacy, thank you very much for doing this once again. Um, Stacy is a talented professional from the HR industry um, who has been helping Olims and uh, Israeli's best international talent with the coolest, most uh, innovative tech startups in Israel. So, Stacy, I'll give it to you. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to your audience? Amazing. Yes. Yeah, so I'm originally from Las Vegas, Nevada. So that's a pretty uh, interesting place to be from. Um, yeah, so I came to Israel about five years ago to do my master's um, mm -hmm. in work uh, and trauma and crisis and then quickly realized that that's a really hard, hard job. But it, I loved it. You know, I love working with people. And that's kind of how I got into recruiting is that love of passion of people and like still wanting to find a way to connect what I loved about social work, but maybe in like a less, less intense kind of environment. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, So I got into recruiting and, you know, I've been doing it for a year and a half and I really love it. Mm -hmm. um, it's amazing. That's awesome. Let's just say we have been talking about this for a while and you and I both know because we are both Olim. So for people who don't know, Olim Khadashim uh, is a term used in Hebrew for new immigrants. So a lot of people uh, make Aliyah and, uh, so we need to understand like every year there are thousands and thousands of, let's say, new immigrants yeah, yeah. or Olim Khadashim and they want to fulfill their dreams by staying in Israel. And obviously, like we know, Israel is, is expensive. Yeah. We all need to look for Smart. jobs and, and jobs that make us happy. All right. Now, it's a challenge when you're sending your CVs and getting absolutely no feedback or response. And moreover, in Israel, people are unaware that there are English speaking jobs as well. Um, and even if they do, they don't know where to begin. What's the process? Who do I contact? Which are the best platforms? So to begin with, uh, can you tell us which are the best industries or like which industries offer English speaking jobs? Yeah, so I think it's an amazing thing that we're talking about it because it's definitely something that's super difficult. I even know for myself as an Ola, like, where do I even begin? So I know, um, especially in a lot of fields like sales and marketing and even product, you know, there are so many opportunities for Olim. You know, I think people forget that Israelis want to market to the world. You know, we are looking to be international. So mm -hmm. in order to do that, you need people who are international to do that. It gives them right. an entryway just to like get in there, get their skills out there. And the fact that, that we have mother tongue languages of all different types of languages, obviously, mm -hmm. English is a super big, important part, but, you know, there are plenty of companies that want to target, you know, Latin America, or there's plenty of companies that want to target the APAC region. So you're like, hey, do you know Korean? That's a huge big plus for us, mm -hmm. um, you know, all over Europe, too. So I think it's really important to remind themselves that, like, these are kind of jobs where you can see yourselves really thriving, you know, as customer facing roles um, or marketing roles where, you know, I don't know if everyone's watched, you know, regular TV here in Israel, but marketing here sucks. So, you know, we need, we need <laughs> internationals, for, internationals really do bring that edge. And like, there are such better marketers across the world. And like, I know, you know, for yourself, like you have so many skill sets that you can really bring to the table. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the tech companies and startups and marketing agencies really, really want this from Olim. So you're saying like, jobs like sales or maybe some anything which is client facing and that might need more than two languages out of which like English is is one yeah these, no like, definitely I think like these are a really good focus obviously mm -hmm. we have tons of amazing you know engineers and there's opportunities for you know for Olim in this capacity it does but, require you to be a person who's going to be like hey I'm going to go out and learn Hebrew you right. know like even in recruitment, like obviously I work in an English speaking setting, but like a lot of recruiters, it's really useful to have multiple languages. Mm -hmm. um, it just makes you more diverse. And I hey, um, I really believe that Olim should also inverse and, you know, get invested in Hebrew too. I think it's a really, it helps you to expand yourself. I agree with you. Like I, I did go to an Ulpan uh, at the beginning of like my, um, what do you say, Alia process. Okay. Uh, but eventually, because you want to you know, start with something or some money, I think it's easier to get a, a find an English speaking job. And then, you know, when you have uh, the mental capacity to, OK, now I have the money, I could probably focus yeah. on learning Hebrew. Yeah, um, I think yeah. I should be taking some more Hebrew classes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's just one of those things for Olim. Like there are so many job opportunities and even just like 
a little bit of Hebrew can get you a bit longer, but you know, you, d- you do have so many opportunities here as a lean. Like if you look in sales, like SDR, BDR, or if you look in marketing and digital marketing, mm-hmm. content management, you know, all of these different types of roles, they mm-hmm. do require other language speakers. And there are tons out there. You just have to, you know, know where to look. Let's say now I have noted down that, 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 that. these are uh, roles that offer jobs in English. Now, where do I look for them? Like, where do I exactly go? Who do I contact? What's the yeah, way to go? So there are a lot of amazing resources out there. I don't know if you guys are familiar with like Nepish by Nepish. They obviously have a platform. We have a platform of Start HR. Check us out. Um, and, you know, there are also like LinkedIn is, I would be lying if I didn't tell you that LinkedIn's the, the hub, you know, mm-hmm. that is definitely the place to look for everything these days. Uh Um, But also Glassdoor or there's like Masa Facebook groups that have amazing resources for, you know, people who finish programs and like want to get jobs. There's a whole career page. Wow. Um, And there's a lot of different Facebook groups for Olim that speak different languages, multi-languages. So um, Uh there's definitely a lot of resources that I can definitely share with you in order to find jobs. Yeah. So I remember like when we had that conversation, um, you said like LinkedIn is like your virtual CV. Do you want to elaborate yeah. more on that? Like why why should I have a LinkedIn uh, profile for sure? No, it's amazing. I think LinkedIn is like such the place to be. And I also actually had a post about it the other day. Um, LinkedIn is really the place where every employer can go to see who you are, you know, in the social media world. It's like my, I don't know. I, I love LinkedIn. I'm like, a, it's like my new favorite social media site, <laughs> which is like sad, but it's amazing. There's so many cool things about it. You know, obviously if you have a professional photo, like that goes just to showing who you are, like, what's your vibe? Like, what do you look like? People mm-hmm. love to make, you know, when you see a CV, it's like a boring piece of paper. Like, you know, obviously if True. you're creative, maybe you do some fun, you know, accents to it, but True. your, your LinkedIn profile can really accentuate, you know, who mm-hmm. you are and make you like a human. You know, mm-hmm. you're not just a piece of paper and like it's boring and standard. Right. Way to like be creative and have an about you and like write something. Like I think of it as like, you know, it's the OK Cupid of <laughs> getting out there in the job world. You know, so I think it's an amazing tool and you can put your skills and you can really allow yourself to connect and network with tons of professionals mm-hmm. and really get your out there so it's it's a great resource and i think everyone should utilize it to all of its max abilities yeah i'm gonna add stacy's linkedin uh profile to my description so if you want to go follow her connect with her uh, yeah, definitely. go for it okay so that was linkedin okay so now i i've seen these couple of roles on linkedin how do i like what's the process from there sure. especially for um you know Mm, what do you say people looking for entry-level jobs everything is so new you're a new country you're yeah. applying for a new job like how do I go how do I go about it so I think something that's really a good idea for everyone who's entry-level looking out there for a job you know it's a tough market right especially so I'm sure that everyone you know nowadays you know this time of year has realized that, that the high-tech sector and there have been a lot of layoffs and things like that but I don't want people to get discouraged because it's really important to keep trying and putting yourself out there And the more you put yourself out there, the better you get at interviewing and the easier it becomes and the more likely you are to nail the next job interview and really Mm -hmm. like succeed. Um, Mm -hmm. But I think when you send your CV out there, it's super important to like follow up, you know, like recruiters are people too. We're human and we don't have, we're not always that great. We're on the phone 24 seven. So sometimes things get missed. But Mm -hmm. I think what's really cool, if you send the thing on LinkedIn, you can sometimes see who is the recruiter. Now, why not try to connect and just send up like, hey, saw this awesome job post that you made and try to make it personal. I know for mm-hmm. me, when I get like that, it makes me more like, hey, like, let me go check out this person who took an extra two seconds to like try to connect with me. And like, you know, it tries to like make it a more personal relationship. And let's say you've like gotten in the door, you got the phone call and you're like, hey, that was a great phone call. They're going to do, you know, a next Zoom meeting or something. Right. Also, like follow up, be in touch with the person, like try to make these conversations like very mm-hmm. much an interaction and keep them going that lets them know like you're interested. I know that a lot of times this really helps juniors, you know, but also get out there, you apply to the company, do some research, you know, get to know right. them, get to who they are. It's um, interesting because when I was in that position, 
I thought, um, especially on LinkedIn, you can see who's like who's viewing your profile. So I, I always felt like probably this person or this recruiter might think I'm stalking him or her, and <laughs> I don't know how, like how this person is going to think. Or but it's it's nice to know that HRs um, don't think that way. They feel like, oh, that's a bold move. This could be interesting. I mean, yeah, definitely. Wow. Thanks for letting me know. And I'll, uh, I'll keep that in mind. Yeah, for my no, future. I think it's a great way to just like make yourself a little bit more. I mean, I know it sounds like you're making yourself more available, but like at the right. same time, you're putting yourself out there and that's half, mm-hmm. that's half the battle. It's just getting yourself out there. I agree with you. From the time I apply for the shop till I get an offer letter, let's say what's the tentative duration or the cycle. Uh, I, I don't know what to call it, but like, yeah, the cycle. Uh, the cycle like how long tentatively does it take especially in yeah. Israel so definitely here is way longer than I think most place in the world like I know I can speak for the U.S. I can't speak for everywhere but it's right. like two weeks there so here you know you're going on like sometimes two weeks to a month and that is like whoo a lot of time and you know I know oh, a lot wow. of times people get really antsy during these periods like why is it taking so long but to right. be honest it's actually the normal cycle here in Israel it's very standard to like have it like be like this month long period. And that is Mm -hmm. because when you quit a job or you leave a job, you also have to give a month notice. So it kind of gives employers some time to like really make a decision. Like, is this the right person for us? You know, obviously if they want to do it faster, they they can and they will. And if they Mm -hmm. like you, they'll they'll try to speed it up as fast as they can because they know they want to grab you before you you run off to somebody else. So, but this is kind of the reason why it's this, this length. As we've seen mostly. Yeah, I I thought it was um I don't know I think it depends from industry to industry because um I think the tech industry is the fastest as far as I know but I could I could be wrong but I think company I I wouldn't say companies like industry that are a little more old school in terms of like how they work like say the airline industry or some other industry they take a lot more time to you know give their decision and oh my gosh, like, I, I feel lucky sometimes that I, I didn't have to go through that um, anxiety yeah. and like, overthinking about, oh, no, probably they've chosen someone else. And sometimes, oh, by the way, Stacy wrote a very nice <laughs> blog about ghosting from the employer side, as well as the candidate side, you should definitely check it out. Um, I think ghosting is something that uh, really freaks everybody it out. Is- literally so horrible. And I can say like, you know, as a recruiter, I know that like, definitely things get built up and like you get tracked backtracked and things like that but like just going the extra mile you know if anyone who's out there is listening as a recruiter just a little psa you know just take the time to follow up with people you know mm-hmm. i think it goes a long way and like even if it's a rejection and also for the candidate even if you're getting rejection i think it goes along with the person to just pick up the phone and say like hey i'm really sorry it's not going to work out you know that's like my ideal scenario is like to call people because calling takes time, you know, and True. when you call someone, it means like you're actually showing that you care. And right. even though it's, I know for juniors out there that are like going through that struggle, like, what do I do? Also, you know, like follow, follow up, like, seriously, like what's going to hurt? Like, is it going to, it's probably not going to hurt that you just sent that extra email, just being like, Hey, remember me? I interviewed, like, I'm really interested, like would love to proceed. Like never, never hurt anybody that I know of, like, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, did you come yeah. across in your um, experience who did probably follow up or I don't know, you know, follow up like a million times. There's also like a prop. Let's no, say there's a also like spot. a limit, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Hey, I, if somebody, I don't agree with ghosting. I think it's a serious issue that we have going on in the recruitment mm-hmm. field right now. Um, but I definitely do think like, you know, I have, I would, I would be lying if I didn't say I had people who like constantly like, what's the deal? What's the deal? What's the deal? And it's like, Hey, like some of it is just being patient in the process, you know, and you need to know as a candidate, you know, okay, if I followed up and I still didn't get a response, you know, like mm-hmm. wait a few days, you know, don't, don't do it like 10 minutes later. That's probably not. Oh man. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, you have experienced that like co- yes. candidate. Oh my God. No, <laughs> definitely. Hey, I've experienced like all sorts of types of candidates, oh you gosh. know, some, some good, some bad, but, um, you know, I think it's like part of the process is also learning like, Hey, like when to push and like when not to. And I think the more that you get experience with interviewing, the better that you get at it and the stronger that you get and mm-hmm. really like 
some of it's just learning and growing and you know like even with rejection there's like something to be learned there and like to how to improve you know we are all human we can always improve awesome let's say i got my job ta 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 everything's cool but if i want to um i wouldn't say suggest but give some recommendations uh, i mean obviously i'm not a, a recruiter but you know friends ask me like how did you get this job what would you um let's say give me like three to five tips that i should probably uh, share like these tips with my friends and they could probably they'll make their recruiting experience a little more smoother and uh, with less friction let's say that Yeah so I think um one thing that you can try to do I know like actually we have a a really a really great blog also on like you know how to kind of stay relaxed during the recruitment process mm-hmm. and I think you know sometimes it's like really just about hey take a deep breath step away you know you applied just have to kind of like figure out how to be patient and like what does that mean like you know go do yoga or like go play basketball or like go take a walk or like whatever it is that you can do to like calm your nerves during the process mm-hmm. um i think is really really important and also as uh, some other tips when you're applying for jobs is really just like put out your information make yourself accessible you know make sure that like when you apply for a job i know a lot of times like people like stop checking their spam boxes which I know it sounds like silly and minute but literally like I know that people have like missed opportunities because they just like hey I applied but why didn't I never hear anything and like they're not really like constant like looking at their email but like you don't want to be too much but make sure you're like regularly actively looking at like the places that you applied and seeing like what's going on mm-hmm. um I think you know obviously if you got past the CV stage and they called you you know like try to follow up and see how it's going if you haven't heard back right um I think it's really the biggest thing that you can do for yourself is just try to like take a deep breath and realize like hey you know I only can control what's in my what's in my ability and like you know walk away feeling like you you got this and trying mm-hmm. to stay positive and thinking positive really helps you know but we have a really great uh blog about it so I can show you guys if you guys want For sure I'm adding um, the link to the description go for it <laughs> Um okay So so quick um let's say pointers the best and the worst times to apply in Israel like which is the best which are the best months which are the best days um what do you think what do you have to say about that um so definitely don't apply during the Chagim it is <laughs> not the best time to apply um but the best time to apply honestly and and what i've seen is like usually in quarter 1 and quarter 4 Why? Oh. Because the beginning of the year, people are like, yeah, 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 let's hire. And they mm-hmm. want to hire for the, whole, for the whole year. And at the end of the year, they're like, wait, we got to hire some people for the next year. So these days, these times are like super hot points during uh-huh. the year. Also, uh-huh. I would say during the summer, a lot here is a really good time to apply. I don't know why, mm-hmm. but it just a lot of places in the summer, I guess, everyone's happy they're at the beach or and they're half, they're feeling good they want to hire some people so um but i've noticed that those are the really good times of the year if you really want to get a job like you'll notice that those are the biggest times of the year where a lot of places start to put out job posts is in mm-hmm. quarter 1 and quarter 4 interesting q1 and q4 yeah. all right i know i i know you did mention about um getting the employer's attention but do you have other than let's say um sliding into linkedin dm uh maybe sending a cold email like like do the recruiters yeah. appreciate that or it's is yeah, it too much it spam i think it typically can help um but i you know i do know sometimes it like just gets piled up and people don't really look at it they think of it as like a oh, wise as bdr kind of person getting to me but i definitely think that if you're doing it in a tasteful and like tactful way you know if you what i would suggest you know is having a subject line that's catchy that's like going to catch their eyes and they'll be like why i have to like i want to open this you know like use your marketing skills make a cute copy like a small little micro copy and put it out there and you know keep your keep your little like your message kind of short and concise like why you're reaching out to them i think mm-hmm. these kind of messages are really good you know i saw Uh, actually a friend of mine sent me you know a message that she wanted to send when she applied for a job I told her like yo this is like a school novel like you know this is like a essay paper like yo like you uh, cannot send this like as too long me, my, 
if I saw something like that, I'd be like, I don't have time to sit here and read that. But if right. it's short, concise, with a cool, you know, subject line, even like a cool emoji, I love a good emoji. I don't know about you guys, but I love emojis. So <laughs> that I think because because uh, you're like a, uh, I think it's a generational thing. Um, because you're like a, a new school uh, recruiter. I think you appreciate cool things and like stuff like that. Yeah. I'm not very sure about like old school recruiters. I will have to find someone who really says oh, I enjoy a, a a nice email, a bold email. But that's interesting to know. Yeah, I think. Hey, I think it like doesn't go against you as long as you're not like spamming the person. I think that trying and and it's being innovative, mm-hmm. and also it shows that you're a go getter. I think people really like that. You know, like in my opinion, I see that as like a very big perk, especially like, let's say I have a sales candidate who's Mm -hmm. like already selling me on themselves. Like, you know, I'm probably more inclined to maybe speak with him or her. Okay. Understood. Noted. (laughs) Uh, What about CVs? Because I, because I come from India for people who don't know, I was born, brought up in India. I made Alia two and a half years ago. So most of my life I've been there. And in India, I see a difference between like how people create their CVs. In Israel, as far as I know, correct me if I'm wrong, um, people don't look at CVs if it's more than a page long. Uh, whereas in India, it's fine to have a CV up with two pages. I mean, interesting. I, 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 I've seen companies who do want like short and concise CVs, but what do you have to say about um, sending CVs to Israeli tech companies? Yeah, so definitely the one pager is a must here. Recruiters here are not looking that that in depth. They're looking for keywords. But I can make any recommendations is like if you see kinds of jobs that you're looking for, like obviously don't go out there and like I don't want people to like go out there and feel like they have to like change every single CV to like every single job they ever made. You know, it should also align with your LinkedIn. You know, you don't want your because people are gonna check your CV and your LinkedIn. So you want to make sure they go together a bit. Mm-hmm. But I think it is important to like try to take buzzwords. Right. That will allow you to see that you have the skills. Even something cool that I see sometimes, which I think really helps me as a recruiter, is that people actually like bold the buzzwords. So really? I'm like, drawn, I'm like drawn to it right away. Um, Interesting. So be a really great tool, I think, also. Um, also, people like data on CVs um, here, like all about data. So if you have like, if you're someone who's like doing like, you know, digital marketing, and you can like show proof of like how much your posts get attraction, or, you know, if you've done sales, and you can say like how much percentage of your KPIs you hit, I think that these kind of help recruiters say like, wow, these people are impressive. They like want to get to know you. Mm-hmm. Um, I think also having, I know like it was a subject of debate, like, should I have it about me? Like, should I say something? And it's like, yeah, I think it's a nice way to also say something creative about yourself at the beginning, kind of give mm-hmm. some more flavor text, you know, like, mm-hmm. don't go too wild on it. But you know, like, just to say a couple short things about yourself. Um, and a skill section is necessary. Um, I really think this like helps them to like, you know, just bullet points of like what your skills are. Mm-hmm. And if I can make any suggestion as a recruiter, um, biggest suggestion is in terms of languages, super, super important to put your your languages out there and to put it with like a word instead of the bars. I know like on Canva these days, they give like options of like, how many dots in English do you have? I don't know how many dots in English, <laughs> what does it mean? <laughs> like It's subjective, no? It's subjective. subjective. It's subjective. So I think like having a word can really be helpful. Um, you know, like proficient or like, it in, like, uh, like conversational level, like these kind of words. And I think it's important to also remember that like 95% of recruiters are Israeli. So you do want to make sure that you're, the language that you're writing it in, obviously English or Hebrew, I guess, if you're feeling fancy, um, but most people want English CVs, um, you know, use words and ger- like terminology that are like easily used for anybody, you know, from any language background. So, mm-hmm. you know, I would say like, try to recognize that that can really help you. Like I know like, native English speakers, obviously they put native level, they put native on the the CV, but like sometimes other language speakers, like let's say you're from France, they'll put bilingual. Um, And sometimes I've noticed that like Israelis don't know what bilingual really means. So like writing native level or mother tongue level can really allow them to assess easily. Like, wow, you're like at a very high level. So I think it's also kind of realizing that you can kind of adapt to maybe a Comp like a a good professional level of English under CV, but not trying to like you know overkill it because you know most people who are going to look at it are going to be Israeli. So I think that can right. kind of help also. 
Cool. Also, um, I was thinking uh, about one other thing that we can totally do in order to grab uh, recruiters' attention. And it's a super easy tool. And LinkedIn has gone out there and built you this little cool, fun, open for work hashtag. And I think oh. it's super important that if you are now looking for a job, advertise it. Advertise yourself. Post something on LinkedIn. Have friends post for you. Have them reshare your post. Um, mm-hmm. Put it out there because when you put this tag, it allows people like me to see that you're looking for something. And if it's relevant mm-hmm. and I have something, I'll go ahead and send out you a cold message, you know, and say like, hey, I have this oh. cold message. Maybe, maybe you could be a fit. So also, this is another great way to really get recruiters attention, I think. That's awesome. I think uh, LinkedIn, like, also with the hashtag, they also have a frame that says open yes. work. Is it an Indian thing or whatever? I, I, I just don't know. <laughs> I feel like it. Like, especially when I speak to my friends, they're not very comfortable telling people that they're open to work. And I mean, I want to find a way and tell them, like, it's fine to, you know, say that on LinkedIn that I'm open to looking uh, or looking for another job or switch uh, to another job. Because I feel like people are embarrassed of switching jobs because they feel like um, it's not stable enough or they're not consistent. What do you have to say about that? Do you have any um, comments? I definitely think that you shouldn't be embarrassed to to look for another job or to get yourself out there. I think that's like the wonderful thing about LinkedIn is that it's really a social networking platform for you to get integrated with other like-minded professionals out of your comfort zone. And I think by allowing people that to know that you're open to something new, you know, mm-hmm. every, there, there are tons of reasons why people leave jobs, you know, like or look for new jobs. And I think it's totally understandable that like maybe at first it's uncomfortable. You're not ready to advertise it yet. But I think that if you just put that little extra oomph out there, you know, Mm -hmm. you'll start to see that more people are going to connect with you also and say like, Hey, like I saw your background. It looks incredible. Like, you know, whereas maybe if you didn't put it out there, they would have had no idea, you know, correct. Know that recruiters really appreciate this tool. Mm -hmm. Um, It's kind of like allowing us to do our job slightly (laughs) easier. (laughs) Um, you know, and it allows us to know that you're ready, you know, that you want to be contacted, you know, like, and right. I think that really helps in the game is like, you know, to open that door is like, okay, like this person's open to chat, they're, they're available, they're looking to be, they're looking to be recruited. So let's say as a recruiter, what are the top three qualities you see in, in a candidate? Obviously, I would say like, you know, being social and having an ability to like, really express yourself, I think definitely helps you to to do better in you know interviewing processes um someone who feels confident in like what they're looking for and like has an idea of what they're hoping to gain in their next role i think mm-hmm. these are all things that really make people successful um you know when you go to an interview you want to feel like the person you're talking to like also knows a bit about who you are or what you're what they do um mm-hmm. so it's nice like obviously for an agency it's a bit different we're helping you to connect connect with different types of jobs um, right. But if you do see a job post, you know, read about the company, like come to the interview and say like, oh, I actually like I saw this initiative that you guys do and I love it. Like, you know, like I think that's like, wow, this person took the time to like actually read some some of our information, which is really cool. Uh huh. I know that we talked a bit about stalking the person who's going to be recruiting you uh, uh-huh. or speaking on the phone. But I think it's also an amazing tip that you should like do a bit of research. Like, who is this person I'm about to get on the phone with? You know, look them up and say like, Hey, like this is their profile. This is their background, and maybe like try to connect between you and them, like on a professional. But you know, make it more of a conversation. You know, like say like, hey, like I saw also you were interested in this. Like I know like once in an interview, someone said like I saw that you actually came from a background in social work, and and I was like, they're like, oh, I saw these initiatives that you actually worked on. Like I thought they were super awesome, and it just was a nice conversation piece, like to make the conversation flow. Mm-hmm. And I think when conversations go in this direction, it's usually a good sign because they're like, hey, we talked about the job, but like, let's talk about who you are, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that really adds a nice, you know, piece. So I think it's good to like research the person, research the company mm-hmm. and be confident in yourself when you're applying because you got this. Confidence it is. All right. So we are almost like towards the end of this video. By the way, I have to tell you guys that Stacy was the one who recruited me to my current company. That's how <laughs> I think we built a nice bond. And like now we're doing this video for you guys. So Stacy, why don't you go ahead and tell us about Upstart HR and what do you guys do and how can people get in touch with you and get the 
the thing going. Amazing. Yeah. So um, Upstart HR, where, you know, we're a boutique recruitment agency um, in Tel Aviv. We're working with a lot of different Olim from all different backgrounds all across the world. You know, you name it. We've met you. Um, we've talked to you. So and we're helping you guys find different jobs, mostly in the tech and startup nation kind of part of, you know, the fields here in Israel. Um, but, you know, we do work in some others like marketing agencies and we do work in some consulting firms and law firms as well. Um, so the best way to get in touch with me, um, as I've mentioned a bunch of times, I'm a big LinkedIn nerd. So <laughs> please LinkedIn message me and I'm happy to get in touch with you. Um, but you can also check out our website. Um, we have a great website with a lot of open positions on things that we're working on actively. And if there's mm-hmm. not something there um, that fits you right now, please just like put your CV. Um, we have a great portal. You can just like upload your CV and we'll get in touch with you and and we can have like a, you know, an informal little intake call and talk about what you're looking for and how we can help you achieve your goals. So you can mm-hmm. check us out on Upstart uh, HR, that's CL Dial. Um, and connect with me. You can also connect with my coworker, Galit. She's an amazing recruiter also. And we can help you to jumpstart your career, hopefully starting tomorrow. Oh, that's awesome. I, I love how uh, optimistic you are. <laughs> Thank you, Stacey. Thank you for... Um, doing this, uh, I know a lot of people uh, don't like to share, but I'm but I'm glad you uh, took this opportunity. Uh, you know, it, it's tough. You know, the job market is tough everywhere in the world. Um, no, and I'm I'm no. glad we could share uh, these insights. You know, so thank no, you very I was much. No, I'm honored that you asked me. I was so happy. So I'm happy to be here, um, and I'll hope to chat with you more about anything else. Of course, I think we might do. <laughs> A lot more videos because I think this one went really well. Guys, if you have any questions, please go ahead, uh, comment in the comment section. Tell us what other topics you would like us to talk about related to the Israeli job market. And uh, uh, we'll try our best to cover it. Stacey, you can say bye to uh, to our audience. Bye. (laughs)